My name is Kim Bash, and the reason why I started doing these Zoom calls was because many people, I'm in real estate, I have been for the last 10 years, and many people are reaching out to me from all over the world saying, Kim, we want to come to Israel, but we don't know where to go. We come, we've come, we been to Israel many times um, as tourists on vacation, but now we're thinking about Aliyah or even securing a home in Israel. Where would the best place to do? Where can we go? Where are, the, where are there soft landing communities, people that are the same as us? So I started to really do some research and it's been amazing. So we've been doing this now for the last... I think it's going on seven, eight months already. And um, discovering for me, it's been amazing because I cannot believe how many amazing communities there are all over Eretz Israel. And uh, I really believe, and uh, this is how I sell real estate, is that it's not about a house. It's about finding your community, which becomes your home. So it's very important for me that when I'm representing Israel that I know about all these communities. So I have a better understanding of when people phone me and ask me where to come, where to go, where I feel would be the best place for them to fit in. So we've got people from all over the world right now calling us and asking us, you know, we want to bring, we, we're from New York, we're from Los Angeles. We, we're coming with 20 people, 20 families. Where are we going? Help us find the right place where we're going to fit in. So um, that's how these calls all started. And these calls are all in the memory of my dear parents who were who passed away this year. Um, I lost both my parents, unfortunately, this year. And they made Aliyah in their 70s. And I always say, if people can change their lives in their 70s, anybody can do it. And they came from South Africa, which is a, you know, they had a big house, big space, and they came to Israel to live in a tiny little apartment in Israel, in, in Jerusalem, in the old city next to me. So it's all a reframe. Um, so we are doing the second session of Yerushalayim. Last week was amazing. And I had a request to talk about more neighborhoods. So uh, uh, we're going to start off. Um, I'd like our first speaker, uh, the Gerstenfelds, who are in Nachla Arts. And I had the pleasure to meet them a couple of years back when they were first uh, looking for apartments. So uh, if you would introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourselves. <laughs> um, Elaine Gerstenfeld and um, Eliezer Gerstenfeld, formerly Eric Gerstenfeld. Um, so we made Aliyah about uh, be two years coming up this January, and uh, but we bought we bought our home about three years ago. And um, do you want to know about our background first? You can maybe? just give us a brief a brief about your, okay, yeah. your, your where you come from, okay. what you do. We made Aliyah uh, from Baltimore, Maryland, and actually all our children and grandchildren are still there. We're working on them, but we're actually not, but um, <laughs> <laughs> if they want to come, they're going to have to come on, you know, on their own. Um, but we're both retired, um, so we came on Aliyah as, as retirees. Um, yeah, my husband was in software, and um, I was an art director at a university. And uh, it was, I'll be honest, it was my husband's dream always to make Aliyah, but it was very hard when the kids were a certain age. Um, and we decided to wait till they're all married. And we, so we made Aliyah two years ago. Um, yeah, just to give you a background, uh, we're, in terms of our demographic, we're 60. Uh, we made Aliyah at 62. Uh, we came from... Uh, a religious area in Baltimore. I'm originally from New York. Uh, Elaine is from Montreal. And uh, we loved our community in Baltimore. Really an amazing, beautiful uh, Jewish chevra in Baltimore. The rabbis, they're amazing. The kehillas there are outstanding. We loved it there. Really, really loved it there. Um, but as Elaine said, I had a dream of of coming to Eretz Yisrael. And, and coming here were you know, hopefully I, both me and Elaine can have some kind of an impact rather than coming here when we're at the point where we're so old that we can't have any impact. And when we felt that we um, kind of discharged our main responsibility for our kids, meaning all of them were married and seemed to be doing okay, we made a decision that, that now is the right time for us to go to Eretz Yisrael. So we made the move, 
and we bought a place in Nachlaot, which is, uh, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this area. It's, if you're familiar with Machne Yehuda, which is the Shuk, the Jewish Shuk in Jerusalem, we live about a three minute walk from Machne Yehuda, which is really unbelievable. The fruits of Eretz Yisrael is amazing. Nothing really compares at amazing. all. Amazing, <laughs> humongous, massive, and beautiful. It's like we they're on have, holy steroids. We even we have a uh, a merpeset that in our home that we grow pomegranates. Lane's going to run and show you some of our pomegranates. You know that we grew here, and um, we're also a five minute walk from the light rail. Here are our pomegranates. From our tree. From our first, tree in our in our These definitely are our first fruits. Right off, yeah. Wow. First, all right. And um, we're about five minute walk to the light rail. We're about a 20 minute walk to Geula. We're about a 35 minute walk to the Kotel. We're about a 15 minute walk to the to center city. I mean, it's really, we're about a 20 minute walk, maybe a 50 minute walk to the uh, central bus station. So we have access to Mamash, everything, Kimat, everything that Jerusalem has to offer mm -hmm. is pretty much at our fingertips. We also feel, at least we feel pretty strongly that whenever Mashiach does come, there's gonna be a parade down Yafo and we're three minutes from Yafo, so we're gonna be right there too. You know, so we, we will really- We will be the pit stop. <laughs> right, we will be the pit stop for everybody, right, right, right. So we really feel we're in the center of Kimat everything, and we really love it here. We miss our kids, we do miss our kids um, and our grandkids, and that's true, and we hope, you know, and we've tried to come here with um, enough money that we can make trips back and forth to see them and Corona has put a damper on that. So that, you know, that is something that we do miss. But other than that, our stay here has been phenomenal. And for people in our situation, I mean, I can't even think what else could be better than what we have here. It's really been outstanding. Now, I just wanna preface that our situation at our age and stage in life means that we don't have to worry about schools for the kids, we don't have to worry about transition for the kids. You know, there are a lot of um, yes. issues that come that may came up, that may come up for some of you that we've totally bypassed, right? But for us, there's no other place to be. We love it here. We can't imagine being anywhere else. And although we talk about going back to Baltimore to visit everybody, we're we're somewhat concerned about leaving Eritrea's world. We love it here so much. It's really, the people here are great. The smells here are great. The taxi drivers here are great. <laughs> it's really, sure you know, every day is mamash, a new experience here. And you see people from all over the Jews, all over the world. And you feel that there's an in-gathering that's coming to Eretz Israel and you're on the boat and you're not gonna miss the boat. Also, you know? so somebody's asking uh, what neighborhood, it's Nachlaot. It's actually a very old neighborhood. It's one of the neighborhoods, I think, one of the, I think, uh, the ones that were built outside the old city um, when they began building outside of the old city. So it is a very old area. Um, what else was it? somebody asking? Um, it, it's like, it, it, it has very quaint alleyways, beautiful flowers. It's a very eclectic neighborhood. There are people who are from, who are not from, who are young, who are old. You know, I don't know how you would label us, but you know, we're kind of, I don't know, torches. Okay, so, <laughs> very I, want, eclectic. so I wanna I wanna cover some of the questions you have here. They're really can very, we, very good. Sorry, Eric, can I can I just say we're gonna cover a lot of the th questions at the end because there's a huh. lot of people that wanna talk. Got so it. I don't wanna because some people have to leave, but you okay. spoke okay. about the community so beautifully. And uh, I know that you also do amazing Shabbat meals. So I know when COVID ends, you, I know that, that people who are looking for a place to come for a meal in Nachlaot, I'm sure that you would open up your, your homes to them as well. So if you'd like to put your contact details as well on the chat, please feel free to do so. 
Um, and just to, I know there's a lot of questions about real estate and about rentals and about buying. I will cover that all at the, at the end. Okay, okay. about that, because I want to give okay. everybody a chance. Is thank there you, anything else that you, you would like us to talk about before, before you move on to somebody else? One, one bit of advice for people thinking of coming to Israel. What is one thing that you would have liked to have known before making Aliyah? Any surprises? Any surprises? We, uh, you know, for us, yeah, I, I was kind of expecting a more of a difficult time for us, to be honest with you, based on things I've heard from people. Um, but for us, there's been no surprises. We knew from the bureaucracy side there would be difficulties, so we expected it. And I would say with that, keep your sense of humor and see the humor in all of this. Because <laughs> the first right. two weeks we were here, as much as it was you know, frustrating walking into somebody's private home thinking it was one of the Aliyah offices that we needed to go to, literally we walked into somebody's home by accident, <laughs> by accident. Um, just keeping that real sense of humor that- uh, That's the most important it thing. It was really, you know- That's really it. Certainly had its humorous side. Right, right. You have to keep a sense of humor. Things happen here, you know? but no big surprises for us. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so I am gonna ask uh, a very good friend um, and mentor, Laurie Palatnik, to speak next. <laughs> okay, great, great, thank you so much. All right, um, so I'm Laurie Palatnik and um, I uh, met my husband here 30, oh my gosh, hold on a second here, probably 33 years ago. He's from Chicago. I'm from um, I'm from originally from Toronto, and we met here. He was a rabbi at Eshet Torah. I had been here for a couple of years. I had like a aerobics business here. We met. We got married in Toronto and moved back to Israel forever. He had been here for ten years. Four and a half months into forever, Hashem had other plans, and we were sent off to Eshet Torah Toronto. Uh, we made a three-year commitment. We were there for thirteen years. We started a whole community there called the Village Shul, and then we moved uh, to the States. Uh, so we, and then uh, we only moved back here a couple of years ago, but we bought our home here eight years ago. Um, I run something, I'm the founding director. My husband was an Asia Torah rabbi, um, and I am the founding director of something called Momentum. It used to be called the Jewish Women's Renaissance Project. And we uh, bring thousands of women and mothers, Jewish mothers, secular Jewish mothers here uh, for like an eight day transformational program in partnership with organizations around the world in 32 countries. And then they go back for a one year follow up. And now we bring uh, their husbands, we bring uh, men here as well. So I'm usually, you know, that, that's what I do. And I'm always on a plane. So a few years ago, because I was back and forth all the time and we have five kids, and a couple of them were here, and one was a uh, uh, Bodet, a lone soldier, and he was coming out, and my daughter was coming to Israel. We needed a place. So we actually looked. Uh, we wanted to be uh, uh, in Jerusalem and near the old city, but not in the old city. The old city is great, but it comes with a lot of challenges also, like getting in and out, and it's very touristy. But I love the feel of the old city. I love the look of the old city. I love the old buildings, the thick walls, the high ceilings, the domes. But living in the old city was not for us. So we look, I literally found a place on Craigslist, Jerusalem. I was looking for a rental. And it was in this, this, this neighborhood called Musrara. And I've never heard of Musrara. I remember waking up my husband, like, where's Musrara? He had no idea, even though he lived in the old city for, for 10 years. So it's literally right outside the old city. Like if you come outside the, if you are at Jaffa Gate, you make a right and you're heading into town. So instead of bearing to the left onto Jaffa Road and you just keep going straight on Shifty Israel as if you're gonna go into Mayor Shari, uh, it's, it's behind City Hall. And right there is this awesome neighborhood. It's historic. Um, it used to be uh, literally on the front lines like when the, the war with the Jordanians. And this is where the Spartan used to live. They actually dumped the Spartan here, like at the beginning of the state. And it, be, it was kind of like a slum, like old Israelis will tell you, like, oh, that was where drugs were and, and like not good things. Um, and now it's gentrified, it's a Chi Chi neighborhood. It's like really a very cool neighborhood. Uh, so it used to, like our home is probably about 140 years old. It used to be an Arab Christian home. It's got high, high ceilings and thick walls. And um, so, 
uh, we, we rented here for about a year. We fell in love with it and we ended up buying here. So we only moved here full time two years ago. This was kind of like my base when I was going back and forth. Our oldest daughter, who now lives in Nachlaot, uh, lived here. Uh, our son lived, like everybody was here. My girls, when they came to seminary, they were here. Like, so it was sort of like a sort of a halfway place. Uh, we always knew we were going to live, live in Israel. And I do want to speak to that because we told our kids their whole lives, wherever we lived, this is not your home, Israel's your home. And they would roll their eyes like, oh, yes, Ima, this is your dream. I would stay up at night and in the middle of the night watch Nefesh Benefesh planes land. And I would cry. And, like, and I never gave up for even a day that we're moving back. We left 32 years ago and I didn't give up for a day. They will t- my husband will tell you, never, ever gave up that we're going back. And I always told my kids, Ima and I are going to live in Israel one day. We hope you live there too. And if you don't, we hope you visit. But that's our home. We are guests in America and guests are only as welcome as the host wants them to be. Don't kid yourself. So, uh, so this is what I would say the whole time when they would roll their eyes. Okay. So two of my kids, two of my kids uh, were really into it after seminary. They loved it. They really wanted to marry somebody who lived here. They ended up marrying guys who are not here right now. uh, And one lives in Minneapolis and one lives, was living in New York and literally tomorrow is moving to Detroit. Um, the three who were not interested in, in living in Israel live in Israel, okay? Like, really, they had no plans to live in Israel, but Hashem has other plans. And again, once you keep saying it and you're the lead on it, like you're just like, this is our home. This is where we're going to be. So uh, when we moved back here, two of our kids were living here. One lives in um, Ramad Eshkol, is married and has, has a child and one on the way, please God. And then we also have um, a daughter in Nachlaot. And our son, who I said uh, at the beginning, he was, he had served, he was in yeshiva here. He served in the IDF as a lone soldier. He was in university in Toronto. And like he said, I served, I did my thing. I'm not interested in living in Israel. Lagba Omer, we get an email. He goes, I'm making Aliyah. Like what? So, so he decided like with the world falling apart, he wants to be with his family and he wants to move back to Israel. So now he lives here. So when we were renting here, we fell in love with the neighborhood. We ended up buying. So we love it here. Okay. And that's a good idea too. It's not, you don't have to buy as soon as you come. Sometimes you can rent and check it out, but it's this, what Kim is doing is fantastic because you could talk to people who live in these neighborhoods. We love Musara. Love it. Why? The location is incredible. In 10 minutes, we're at Jaffa Gate and just walk down to the hotel. In 10 minutes, we are in on on Ben Yehuda Street, like ten minute walk. In ten in five minutes, I'm already in Geula and Meishari. In five in five minutes, I'm at the Rakevet, the light rail, which takes you everywhere. You we literally walk everywhere. We don't have a car. We don't want a car. It's like living in Manhattan or Soho or something. This is it's very eclectic too. We love it. There's a little bit of everything. If you want to live in a neighborhood where everybody's the same, don't move here. Okay. We don't want it. I'm not a person who wants to live where everybody's the same. It's like the Stepford wise. It's not my thing. So I like eclectic. I like a little bit of everything. Are there a lot of people like us? No, there's not. But we like that. Okay. We like it. We hope more people like us are moving in, but we're at a stage of life where we're not, you know, like where we we're, we don't have kids in school. We have kids or having kids here who are going to have to please God navigate the school system. But we were fortunate that we could be in a place. And when, when the women and the men come on the trips, we're also like a 10 minute walk to every major hotel here as well. And that's where they are. So for my work, uh, and I'm always on a plane. And so it's easy to get to the airport uh, now that they have the fast train or, or take a, I get a ride there. It's, and I get all my, I get groceries delivered. I even know groceries got delivered into COVID. And then COVID, it's like, I get, even after COVID, God willing, I'm still going to get my groceries delivered. Who wants to go out and get and do groceries when they can just deliver it like that? We get deliveries from the Shook, right? Where the, the, the Gerstenfelds live. Okay, so there's a guy there and we wanted to support the Shook when everything was shut down. And he delivers uh, fruits and vegetables to us. So I, my husband speaks Hebrew. I do not speak Hebrew. Uh, but I get by, like, you know, whether with English and sometimes I have to put my husband on the phone, it's fine. It's like no big deal. Uh, my work uh, is very much, I sit at my dining room table and I, and I run this multi-million dollar international nonprofit from my, from right now from my dining room table. And I'm not on, I'm not, but usually I'm always, I'm flying in and out, in and out. My husband has made Aliyah. I'm in the process of making Aliyah. Our son made Aliyah. Uh, it's, really it's a kind of an artsy kind of neighborhood also 
Uh, there's a film studio, uh, film school here, and there's like an art studio. There's a, very, a lot of arts. So there's every year there's an arts festival. And Bitsalo College, which is the arts college of Hebrew University, is being built like a few yards from us, like right behind, right uh, beside City Hall. This huge, it's going to be unbelievably stunning, uh, new arts college. So it's also going to lift the, the values of the neighborhood. The neighborhood is still turning over. It's not cheap to buy but it's cheaper than almost every nice neighborhood in Jerusalem. If you want to, if you don't want to live in like a new condo and you want like more like, I'm the type of person. And again, everybody is different. I always tell my husband, I want, to, when we live in Israel, I want a home that even if I don't look outside, I know I'm in Israel. Cause sometimes you're in people's homes and like, you could really be anywhere. You look outside, okay, I'm in Israel. But I wanted a place that like, it felt like Israel here and outside. We, our place um, has a mere peset, like a pad, an outdoor patio. It's like about 25 square meters. It's really big and beautiful stone. Our neighbors are all very eclectic. Behind us is a whole bunch of Breslov Hasidim with a bunch of little kids, tons of kids. Upstairs, there was an Israeli woman who's lived here for like 65 years before there was running water. Uh, we had a board mime, I told the people at the beginning, underneath there was a water cistern underneath uh, our home that we ended up renovating and making a separate entrance. So we have a separate like loft bachelor apartment that our son is living in now, but it could be an Airbnb later. A lot of places here have places like that, that you can renovate. Um, there's a lot of students who live here also. There's just a little bit of everything. Are more Anglos moving in? Yes, we now have a WhatsApp uh, Anglo Muswara group. More and uh, some friends are moving in. And because we're here, a lot of people are hearing about it. And we just had a family from Madrid, really terrific, who I've known for years, and they're looking to buy here. They want to live near us. And what can I say? Like, we really, really love it. We thank God we bought eight years ago because we probably couldn't <laughs> afford it by now. But you can still get places, especially if you want to renovate them. Um, because a lot of party lived here for many years and they're selling out because their kids moved someplace else. So you can get a deal. And we got a really good deal on this one because it was, it was a private sale actually. Um, and you just, it takes like just this little Torah because sometimes, you know, like I know it's a big struggle. First of all, never give up on coming here ever, ever, ever. You tell Hashem you want so badly. You live your life. I did everything. We're living in Israel. Either I recovered the couch or what, like always, always we're heading here. And it says like, it takes merit to be here. It takes schus, takes merit. And, that, and it says right in the Chomish that if you don't merit the land, it spits you out. So it takes merit to come. It takes merit to stay. Because I told my husband, you know, we're, we're not retired, okay? My husband's teaching. I'm running this international nonprofit. And I told my other two girls who don't live here, like three out of five are here. I said, you're moving here. It's just a matter of time. Like Hashem, mm -hmm. like I daven, that we should have the merit to live here that all my children should merit to be here. And I, we bought this place on like, we had no money. It was miracles. I can't, I'm not gonna tell you the story, but Hashem, if you want it like crazy, you want it like crazy, Hashem will make it happen. I promise you. I've seen it time and time again. Thank okay. you so much, Lori. And I remember I have such fond memories because Lori, before her JWRP momentum groups, we used to host your trips. When you would come, you used to say to me, Kim, we're going to come, we're going to come, we're going to come. So it's just... Uh, I never gave up. I never gave up. You're gonna, ever. Amazing. I'm going to put my email here. You're, please, please, you're never bothering me. Just email me and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. And we're looking for good neighbors. So if you're terrific, please move into my neighborhood. I actually was in your neighborhood today showing properties, which we'll talk about later on, which was amazing. Thank you so, so much. So I'm going to cross over now to Elisheva. Where's Elisheva? Hi, okay. Hi, how's it going? Good, how are you? I'm so glad you, you're here. I wasn't sure you're going to make it. <laughs> I'm here, I'm in v dude. I'm in quarantine for anyone who wants to know. The shot is my expecting any minute. Okay, so uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the call. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to be here. We never know what's going to happen. But um, okay, so hi everyone. I'm Ellie Sheva. Um, I have been, let's see, in Israel since... 2013, um, but I actually made Aliyah from within the country. So as opposed to, you know, making some big decision when I was still in America, after grad school, basically, I came here. I started off learning in seminary. I'm a Balchuva. So that's how I sort of started. And then I ended up staying and staying and staying. And so for me, it was just much more, it happened this way. You know, obviously everyone's different, but it was very comfortable, much more comfortable, I should say, for me to just continue staying 
um, as opposed to going back and making some big sort of like decision about moving all of my stuff over here. So for me, it was definitely a process. Um, I live in Harnoth in Jerusalem. Um, and I think part of the reason also that I feel very comfortable living here is because I went to seminary here. Um, it's a, a little bit about Harnoff, I guess. It's a pretty, I guess you could say, Anglo-English speaking community. But since it's also has a wide variety of ages and people who have lived here, um, you also have kids of Anglos who are now fully Israeli. So it is mixed. There's definitely Spanish speakers, French speakers, English speakers, Hebrew speakers, but definitely it is a place that I feel that if you need a sort of soft landing, I guess, you would also be able to find that here. So it's a good mix. Um, something that I really like about Harnof is it feels like you're in Jerusalem, but it also feels like you're not in Jerusalem. <laughs> We're on the like very edge of Jerusalem. And I actually have a view overlooking the Jerusalem forest. Um, and in some ways it has a very like suburban kind of feel. Like we have little shops within our area and you can really almost manage your whole life without ever leaving the neighborhood, depending on where you work, of course. But on the other hand, you're still in Jerusalem. So there's local buses, depending on how often people ride them nowadays. But <laughs> in general, there are local buses to also make you feel like you're in the city. We're closer to the central bus station. Um, but Jerusalem is like an interesting city because sometimes you feel like it could be quicker to get to Tel Aviv than it can to get to the other side of Jerusalem. So it just sort of depends on where you live, what your job is, all of that. Um, and what else did I wanna share? I've, I have worked in Israel, both as a salaried employee and now running my own business. So even though this call isn't really about working, I know that that's also a big, of a big concern to a lot of people. What are they gonna do? Um, and I think there are pros and cons to both. So I guess, you know, I, a lot of different people on here are also talking about advice that they wanna give to people. So I just wanna say that I feel like from all of the different people that I've met here, a very, very common thing that I see, and people do it quite successfully, is having to change either their, their job, their career, or exactly how their job looked. I feel like that's one of the, if you can be flexible on that in some way, I really do feel like that's one of the things that makes people really successful about living here. So if anyone has questions, like not just, I guess, about Harnof but also about, you know, working, whatever it is, like, I'm happy to uh, share my experience of, you know, working in as a salaried person, um, running my own business. I do feel like there are a lot of people running their own business here, which I'm sure Kim can also talk about, but um, just because people maybe find it easier, you know, they can work in their own language, they can work with people that they want to work with. And um and yeah, so I'm, I'll, I'll also put my email here and I'm happy to, uh, right. to talk about any aspect if people want to email me later or chat me, whatever, privately. Um, I am happy to speak to anybody. Elisheva, just quickly, um, tell us, because uh, you, she's, Elisheva is amazing and I want you to tell everybody what you do. So quickly okay. tell us very briefly what you do. Yeah, um, I'm a filmmaker, so I have a film business and I specialize in creating branding videos, promotional videos for businesses, for entrepreneurs. And I focus in specifically story-based videos, documentary style. Um, so if that is of interest to, to anyone for your business or for filmmaking, <laughs> you can feel put your Instagram Put your Instagram uh, account down on, on the chat. Okay, great. So I'll put my email and my, my social media so you can connect with me. She's either. awesome and incredibly talented. So check it out. And oh, thank the you so And it just should be an easy birth and a healthy mommy and a healthy baby. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much. much. I'm going to, because we're going, I see it's already 34. Oh, wow, we are running a little bit late. Okay, so next up, I'm going to ask a dear friend and also another mentor of mine, Dini Coopersmith. Hi, Dini. Unmute Hi. yourself. <laughs> Unmuted myself. Here we are. Okay, so um, yeah, 
I am a little different from everybody because I didn't get to make Aliyah. My family made Aliyah when I was eight years old. So I'm an Israeli. I grew up here. I was uh, basically grew up very close to where I live. I live in Malot Dafna, which is like an Anglo Haredi community. And I grew up five minutes down the road in Arze Abira, which is also an Anglo Haredi community. And um, with, you know, except for two years where we spent in Toronto, my husband is Nehemia Cooper Smith. He runs H.com, if anybody knows that. And if you don't, that's crazy. You have to know that. <laughs> um, so he uh, works at Asia Torah and he runs the, the website. And he's from Toronto and the two of us met here. And we, besides for two years that we spent in Toronto uh, working for Aish, we've basically been here our whole lives my whole life. Okay. Um, so my parents live down the road. So again, I can't judge anybody that finds it difficult to uh, come to Israel without family. My parents live here. My siblings all live in Israel. I'm the oldest of six. We all live here. I have a brother who lives in Haifa. I have um, another brother in Beit Shemesh. And besides that, everyone is literally in walking distance to me. Um, I also run a website. i I sort of am the editor of the H.com in Hebrew, H.co.il. Um, I'm a teacher at Be'er Miriam in Harnov. Um, and I also run a little business in this, on the side. As Elisheva was saying, a lot of people run little businesses. Uh, it's kind of like, it's also really more of a nonprofit, although it is registered in Masach Nasa as a little business. Don't make any money on it. But <laughs> it's basically little trips, like what Lori was saying about momentum. So she brings thousands of women to Israel. I bring maybe tens of women to Israel every year. But it's like on a second step, like on a next level trip to Israel after you're finished with that first level, the, you know, almost like a birthright for moms where we have the second level where you're either Shomer Shabbat already or just, you know, toying with the idea of becoming more religious or, you know, you know, the ideas of God and the idea of Torah and so on. So we're that next level little trip to Israel, also a seven or eight day mind, body, soul kind of thing. Anyway, we live in Malot Dafna. What's amazing about Malot Dafna is location, location, and location. That's really all I can say. It's just so, first of all, it's Anglo Haredi, but um, I would say still 50% are Israeli. It's a regular established neighborhood but everyone is really chilled. It's not, nobody's judgmental. Like you could just totally do what you want. Um, I would say in general, about 50% are between the ages of 20 and 35. So it's like a good chunk of a young uh, married, young newly, uh, some newly marrieds from America, like the transitional couples that come to live in Israel for a couple of years while their husbands are in yeshiva. Um, and then a lot, a lot of people with young kids. So there's a lot of little gons and parks, um, schools, a lot of schools in the area. Uh, then there's about 25% of us, like between the ages of 35 to 55. So you have older kids, you have teenagers. Um, and then about 20, another 25% of people around 55 and older. Um, there's definitely an older community here also in their 60s, 70s. Just everyone's so chilled. Like I go out in the morning, I'm certainly not wearing a shito. I go out for my little jog or quick walk and I pass a, a bunch of Rebitsons walking also. And like everyone just says hi and I'm wearing my leggings and a sort of short skirt, not too short, but you know, people are definitely um, more similar, more homogeneous than let's say in Lori's area. Um, kind of like Harnof, I think in terms of you know, you see all kinds and everyone's very chilled and friendly, but it is definitely, I, I think you wouldn't feel comfortable if you're not religious in our area. There's, most people are religious, uh, different kinds. You've got Hasidic, you've got American, you've got Israeli, you've got Yeshivish Haredi, you've got more modern Haredi, but pretty much, you know, all the women cover their hair and, and all the guys, most of the guys are pretty much black and white. Um, but again, people go jogging, guys for sure go jogging. Um, I don't know. What questions? Do we have any questions about this neighborhood? Location. So it's so, so amazing. It's like five minutes away from Ramadish Kol, which has like a whole shopping plaza and area, like tons of restaurants. I mean, now during Corona, not much going on there except for 
food stores and supermarkets and little coffee shops that you just like go and get your coffee and run out, but still fine, very nice. Um, it's very close to the light rail, like a two minute walk to the light rail down the road. It's, um, uh, Dina is discussing Ma'alot Oh yeah, sorry about that. Um, what else? It's- The home to Osamer. Really? Yeah, it's right near, there's a bunch of yeshivas in the area. Orsamech is literally in Malot Afna. Um, it's about a seven minute walk to the Mir Yeshiva, which is a huge, very big um, Haredi Yeshiva down the road towards Beit Yisrael. So I would say towards, like to, for me to get to Lori's area, which is like almost at the old city, would be about 20 minutes, about 35 minutes to the Kotel. I'm talking walking. You could walk all of this on Shabbos. So we have guests from Asia Torah come to us all the time. Um, we it's about a 25 minute walk to the Shuk and to the Gerstenfeld area. It's about mm, maybe, I don't know. What else, what, are, what other areas are fun to talk about that you can get to by, by foot? Basically, I would never leave this area, although I'm dying to have a bigger house and a, and a yard but I would never leave because of the location, you know? Now, thank God, actually, most of the apartments are pretty small here, although thank God what we did about 15 years ago or 17 years ago at this point, we bought the upstairs apartment from us. So we initially about 28 years ago bought the lower floor. And then about 15 years ago, we added on uh, a top floor. So we have two apartments that we made into one. So it's a really nice, size apartment, but it's still an apartment, it's in buildings. I, you don't see houses and yards here, right? Small so problem. that's something that we miss, but it's really such a good location that I can't even think of convincing my family to move out like, to Ramod or to, you know, anywhere where we can actually get a big house and, and a yard. And a dog. Thank you. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Many dogs in Thank you so much. My pleasure, Kim. The great neighborhood. It's very, very central. Very, very oh, central. It's very yeah. close to Ramadashko. We spoke about mm -hmm. Ramadashko last week. So it's it's basically a next door each other. I know a lot of people are telling me that they've got to go. So I'm going to head over to Gary, my very good friend, Gary, sorry, Sfi, who I've known for many, 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 many years and a fellow South African. So thank you so much for coming on. And Gary lives in Makohaim and he's going to tell us a little bit about the neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, hi. Um, so I'll tell you like one brief sentence about myself. Um, I met Aliyah about uh, 17 years ago. Um, I spent time in America and also from South Africa, as Kim said. I've got a swimming school here in the area um, and about the area. So I've been living here for about seven years. Um, what I like about it is that it's also, it's very, very central in terms of being close to um, the German colony. For those of you who know it, um, close to German common colony. We've, we've got a, the mall over here, the Kenyon Hadar Mall, which is also within walking distance of Makor Chaim. Makor Chaim is a street and a neighborhood. It's literally one street um, and that's it. And, and it's considered a neighborhood. Um, it, the feeling that you have when you're in this, when, when you're in the street, it's, Someone said, how do you spell it? M-E-K-O-R. It's Makor, C-H-A-I-M. Um, so the feeling that you have here is that you're in, uh, you're in kind of a suburbia, even though like one road up is the main road of Pure Kinnick, um, which is a, a huge deal for us. We used to live in a microphone, um, like a very busy street. And being here, you feel like you're in, you know, kind of like some kind of suburbia, which is nice. Um, the other thing is... Um, that, um, as I said, pretty central to everywhere, center of town, Rechavia, um, and, um, you know, like the Kotel, those kinds of places as well. It's about, it's about a 20 to 40 minute walk. I don't know if that's close or not. Depends on, on how fit you are, I suppose. Um, another thing here that's a huge advantage is that we live right on this, um, there's something called the Masila, which is a kind of a promenade. Um, it's a promenade that runs all the way up so like the first station, the top of Emigra, like the geography over here, but then goes all the way back to, all around the city down to, to Beta Karen. And, and um, it's literally changed. Um, as I said, as I said, I'm also very involved in sports and um, teaching sports and personal training and so on. So sport is important to me. Um, the, literally the culture of running and cycling, this Missy has completely changed everything. And it's just, again, it's like there's trees and 
you don't feel like you're in the city when you use it, which is great. It's literally like we literally live on, on it over here. Um, a lot of parks as well. Um, my kids um, go to the parks by themselves. Um, we've got friends from other buildings down the road. Um, there's a very nice close-knit community over here as well. Um, no shortage of things to do and um, you know the kids love it. And for the previous speaker said that you know it would be nice to also wish I had a yard and a, and, and a big space but having been so close to parks and, and like the, the nature kind of makes up for it in summer and it's you know it's, it's, it's very very safe you know I feel very comfortable. So Africans don't let the children walk out their house not even two meters but uh, I feel very comfortable letting my kids go and play and you know it's, and they, they enjoy it as well. Um, and the last point, two, or two more points, is um, the shoals. There's, there's like three or four shoals in this area. There's, uh, depending on where you hold them, there's a, there's a French Swadi shawl. Um, there's a, another Swadi shawl down the road. And there's actually another shawl, like all through walking distance. There's no shortage of that. And, and during the COVID time now, um, we're also very lucky that literally in our street, I get out you know, in, in the morning on my balcony, in our little alley, there's, a, there's been a minion three times a day. Um, we dove in Yom Kippur and Shoshana, um, and I know that there's others also around. So, you know, just to give you an idea of, of, um, of how, how organized and how close knit it is. Um, and the last point is schools. Um, schools are obviously an issue for, for many people. Um, there are quite a few choices that, are, again, are pretty, pretty close by. Um, it's called Makor Chaim. I'll repeat it again. See the question over here from Sitera Makor Chaim. It's um, so schools are there are pretty good schools around here. Um, there's you know at least five or six schools in the area that uh, from um, primary school. How you say primary school in American? I don't know. Elementary. Uh, okay. Like the junior grades so and first grade to so like seventh grade or eighth grade. You've got quite a nice choice of young. And in terms of the population, it's also, it's a mix of religious, not religious. Um, one of the Ashels that we were very involved in uh, founding, one of the Ashkenaz Ashels is kind of a Shabbos Minyan. Um, just as an example, it's like, it's kind of half and half, half, half Anglo, half Israeli, and we all get on together and everyone, you know, it's, it's, it's a very nice close-knit community over there as well, um, which is nice you know, to feel, you feel like you're kind of part of, of Israel, so. That's Thank you, Gary. Thanks. I know Gary is Gary because that's his English name, but he goes here. And he's an awesome swimming instructor, just that you know. Anybody who can handle my children. <laughs> okay, so he's awesome. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate <laughs> Thank you. it. And I'm going to cover people asking right. a lot of questions. Thank so you, we're keep going. So we'll answer questions about rentals and properties and all that stuff a little bit later on. And um, Aviva, I know you're having problems with your baby, so she asked to go next. Hi, Aviva. Hi. <laughs> sorry you? for whoever else is also waiting to go next. I'm sorry. My I'm kids sorry. keep waking up. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. My name is Aviva. I've been in Israel for seven years. I'm from Philadelphia originally. Um, I'm going to speak to you about two neighborhoods, actually. I recently moved to Givat Shoal, but I spent all of my married years before this in Kira Moshe. And if you know Jerusalem, they're right next to each other, but they are two worlds apart. Um, Kiryat Moshe has a really big, amazing Anglo community. Um, Kiryat Moshe was founded around two main yeshivas, being um, the Rav Kook Yeshiva, and Mosada Rav Kook, and Machon Mer. And they're like very stark datilumi. Like they, you know, are like really serious about halal on Yom mood kind of thing, but they're like very intense, stark. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a unique thing, I think, to Kira Moshe, but, it, but if, you, if you understand the nuances, you, you get it. Um, and it's really nice. And, it's, and you can feel that the neighborhoods are kind of built around those communities. And um, I love, love, love living in Karamoshe. The only reason we moved to the next neighborhood over is because we found a brand new, beautiful, bigger apartment for the same price we were paying in Karamoshe. Um, Karamoshe is an older neighborhood. The buildings are old. <laughs> You're lucky if you find a renovated apartment. The likelihood that you will wind up in an old apartment is much stronger. And um, 
uh, I went to Midrash Rachel, which is which used to be in Kiryat Shmona, now it's in Givat Shaul. But it, um, there's a Chappelle's Yeshiva, which is right on the edge of Beit Zakarim and Kiryat Moshe. And there's a lot of young Anglo families from the Yeshiva that have kind of started a community in Kiryat Moshe. And uh, people don't want to leave. It's like really hard. Everyone's always looking, you know, I have to move because my landlord is making me. What's my next? Where can I go? Please help me find an apartment so I can stay. Um, and it's a really good mix of ages as well. Like there's a lot of young families, little kids. There's a lot of ganim, a lot of ganim. Um, like really, there's not, no sort of shortage. Uh, and there's also a really good school system. And, um, and we moved to Givat Shaul, which it's a 15 minute walk from my last apartment to my current apartment. And you would think that I live in a different world. Um, Givat Shaul is super Israeli, Haredi. Um, when I meet an Anglo on the street, it's a really big deal. And, um, but we actually love it here. It's been really, really good for our family. We really, really like it here. We're in a brand new building. And if you walk around Givat Shaul, you'll see that there's more and more new buildings, which is really nice. And people are starting to buy here um, new properties, which really does make a difference, which you'll, which is very hard to find in Kira Moshe. Um, we are on five minute walk from the Merkaz Kanfene Sharim, which is like the main street between Harnof, Kiryat Moshe, Givat Shaul, leading up to the central bus station. I have Divan, all like really all of the main stores in our area are five minute walk from my house. Um, all the buses are five minute walk from my house. I could get anywhere I need to go. Um, really close to the train, really close to the central bus station at the entrance to the city. Like anytime I need to leave the city, it's just, I have a car, so it makes a difference, but really just like getting out of the city is much easier. You don't get stuck in all the traffic because really it's, um, my master right there at the entrance. And it's convenient. It's really nice. My kids are gone. I can see they're gone from my balcony. Like we're really, really, really close to me. And um, it's really nice. It feels like very neighborhoody. Both both Kira Moshe and Givat Shaul feel like neighborhoods. Like you walk down the street, you recognize people, you have friends, people take care of each other. When, you know, every single person in my building, my building is a brand new building. Every single person moved in in the same two week period. So none of us knew each other and everyone like takes care of each other. When someone has a baby, they put a sign up, everyone comes bring food. When you have a shiva, you come. When you, you know, when you have Purim, everyone brings shalach It's just like, it's a neighborhood and people really, really, uh, really nice. I live in a cul-de-sac also and all the kids in the neighborhood just are always there. I mean, I'm, it's like a totally different thing. When I was in Kiryu I lived on the main street where the train is and it was really noisy and busy. And I loved it because I was within two minute walk of all my friends, but I wouldn't let my kids go outside. And now it's like all the kids in the neighborhood all the time downstairs, even in COVID. Sorry to tell you. Um, but but it's nice for the kids. It's really nice. It's really gives it the neighborhood feel. Somebody asked about the ages. I would say that it's a very mixed neighborhood, mixed population as well in terms of ages is uh it's as far as I know, right? It's young couples all the way to retirees. Yes, Kiryu Moshe for sure has a big range, like really, really, yeah, uh, there's definitely young couples and there's definitely established couples in the Anglo community, especially there's, there's older couples that have made Aliyah without kids already, like there's really, really, really totally mixed, big range, um, and and everybody's doing everything together. I mean, the Anglo Kiryu Moshe WhatsApp group, there's like 120 something people in the group. It's all age ranges and everyone's constantly doing things for each other. Like your, your Anglo community is your friends and your family and, um, and everyone's always giving each other advice, which schools to send to, which Ghanim to send to, which, uh, which store to go buy what you need at, you know, giving each other all the tips and. Thank you. Yeah. I really, really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. So we're gonna head, we're gonna head now to Ziva. Hello, Ziva. So patient waiting. Pleasure. And, so nice to be and here. She, and she's gonna be talking about a completely amazing neighborhood, which some of you probably have never even heard about, which is considered part of Yerushalayim, right, Ziva? 
We are part of Azor Yerushalayim. We're part of the region of Yerushalayim. And uh, it's a little secret that uh, most people don't know about, like Kim said. It's called Mivaseret. It's actually, uh, just to give you the physical that we're situated, it's located, it's, if you're going out of the Jerusalem Tel Aviv Highway, it's the first exit outside of Yerushalayim, but it's actually physically parallel to the neighborhood of Harnof, which Elisheva spoke about. Uh, so we're just right across the road, and we're right behind Ramot. So, um, you know, in terms of access to Yerushalayim, if I get on a bus from my house, in 10 minutes I'm at the central bus station, uh, if I want to drive in, in less than 10 minutes, in seven minutes, I'm in Givat Shaul that Aviva was just speaking about. So we have all access to Yushalayim. However, it is the suburbia of Jerusalem. Uh, there's a, a, a lot of very high-end people that live here. It's considered, you know, sort of like a little bit high society in the sense that there's a lot of doctors from Hadassah Hospital that live here. There's a lot of Chavre Knesset, a lot of Knesset members that live here. Um, it's definitely suburbia in its physical structure. Uh, so it's a lot of low-rise either houses, like multifamily units maybe, or private houses, uh, which means you know two-family homes that are attached in the middle. Um, there are some buildings, but none of them are really too big, meaning you're not going to have any buildings here that are really more than three floors maximum. It's all very low-rise construction. And um, in terms of the layers, the, the sociological, in terms of the population here, the layers is that Mivaseret is essentially a, a, a medium-sized town. It's not a village, it's a little bit more than a village. We have two huge malls here. We have American stores here, American Eagle even, and Fox and everything you're gonna find in every Israeli mall is here. We have two of them, for whatever reason, right across the road from each other. So shopping here is extremely easy. And a lot of people come from Jerusalem actually to Mivasera to shop. Um, and the city itself is very mixed, meaning as a municipality, it is a secular municipality. However, within that, that town, you have a religious community that is very, very special and very unique in Israel. And the reason for that is that it's a very holy community where you have every type of Jew and everybody gets along. That's what makes it special. Um, so you have people that have, I know, right? It's amazing. You don't find that so often, unfortunately. So you have people here that have black yarmulkes and short payas, and you have people here that have kippot through goat, and you have people here that have breast of yarmulkes and long payas, and black yarmulkes and long payas, and every type of religious Jew that you could possibly want is here, along with the secular community. So you have that mix. So my neighbors are completely mixed uh, across the spectrum. And um, the, this, the religious community, because it's kind of this insular, smaller community within the larger town of Mivaseret, it's almost like living on a moshav within a larger you know, city or town, whatever you want to call it. So everybody here is, um, you know, everybody knows each other. They're very supportive of each other. Um, within that religious community, if we're just going to take the layers down for a second, so you have a secular sort of uh, municipality, you have the religious community within there, a very holy, very special religious community. Like I said, you know, we even have, um, we have a makubal here. We'll keep Shabbos till Tuesday. When I say holy, we're like talking, you know, we're holding, we're very, uh, very unique. So we have a very holy, very special, um, very spiritual to also type of community. And within that, we also have a smaller Anglo community. So that's the third layer. And the Anglo community, because um, we're trying to grow, but we are, you know, a few, just a few families now at this point. It's, it's, about, uh, it's about 12, 13 families um, that are really Anglo. I mean, there's a lot of people here that speak English, but I'm talking about like both, both spouses from an Anglo country, that type of thing. Um, actually, it's a little bit more than them. It's like 15, 16. But we are very much a family. We're looking definitely to add more people here. Um, there is an actual, there's an Anglo, there's an American yeshiva here. So that makes it also, it's very unique because you have the yeshiva here. So you have a lot of people that dive in the yeshiva. You have the yeshiva boys coming when it's not COVID. So it gives it like a very special feeling to it also. Um, so a lot of people are very connected to the yeshiva. And the Anglo, the Anglo families here are very tight. So you'll have people that really span the age range, meaning you'll have people here who are in their 20s and their young families, or you'll have people here that are retired in their 70s, and everybody interacts with each other. Um, we all see each other on Shabbos a lot of times. We'll get together, again, not COVID, but like we'll get together at somebody's house, and you know, it's a very beautiful uh, mix in that sense that everybody is really very tightly connected and supportive of each other. The price ranges, I would say, are still cheaper than Jerusalem. 
However, Jerusalem is never cheap, so I, I hesitate to use that word in any capacity. <laughs> but you can still get more bang for your buck, let's say, in Rivaseret than you can get in Jerusalem. So, for instance, um, again, if you want to get, let's say, uh, a, a nice apartment here, 130 meters or 140 meter apartment, I would say that those range probably from about 2.4 million up to 2.6 million, which is still cheaper than you would find in a place like Katamon or something like that in the middle of Yerushalayim. Um, there are houses options here. So again, I live in a townhouse, which means it's attached on both sides. Um, and those generally range from probably about 2.7 million to 3.4 million, depending on where it is and what the condition is. And then you have beautiful, massive villas with pools and you know, gorgeous, huge homes here that can go up to uh, six or seven million even. Uh, and everything in between. So there definitely are houses to rent here. Um, and anybody who's gonna come here is gonna be very quickly welcomed. They're gonna be very warmly welcomed. You're gonna have people here who are gonna invite you, you know, Friday night for a tish and, you know, singing and having like that spiritual side. And yet you have full access to Jerusalem. Everybody here is generally speaking professionals. Uh, you have very easy access to Tel Aviv because you don't have to go through the whole labyrinth of uh, Jerusalem. You can just exit right out, get onto the highway. And, you know, in 20 minutes, I'm in Beit Shemesh or Modi'in. Uh, about 45 minutes, I'm in Tel Aviv. So it definitely shaves off some of the time in that direction. And, um, you know, I think it's, uh, it, we looked everywhere. We lived in, in Telstone. We lived in Svat. We tried to buy in Ramat Beit Shemesh at one point. But we literally looked at every community, like, to a, a, a really scary degree. And this is the only community I ever found that truly had this beautiful serenity and mix to it of all different types. They have a beautiful Talmud Torah here that, again, we looked everywhere. It's the best Talmud Torah I've ever seen anywhere in Israel. The boys here are fluid in how they daven between Svarti Nusach and Ashkenaz Nusach. That's very much the concept of the Talmud Torah. Everybody's a family. They really try to push each kid to excel like, you know, in their strengths. It's a very loving place, a very familial type of school. Um, the boys are coming out of their excellence. I know that my son just graduated their last year and like all the high schools were pouncing on them. They wanted all these shivas, wanted the boys to, you know, these boys to come there because it's not a typical school in that they don't allow any fighting. Everybody has to get along. They actually talk about midos, which coming from some Anglo countries seems to be, uh, you know, be common sense. That's not always the case here. So it's a very special time to like that. It was actually chosen to be a model school by the education ministry. And, um, you know, it's a school for boys. Uh, a lot of, there is another school here also that's a Mamlachti Torani school, which means it's a state-run, you know, more religious school than just the state-run religious schools. It's Torani. Um, it's also supposed to be an exceptional school. It has a very uh, strong environmental side to it. There is also a boys' high school here, which is mostly for, like, more Israeli boys. There are a few Anglos that have gone there that also has a whole Chakla'i side to it, which means they do a lot of planting and outdoor work and environmental side to thing it. And that really, I guess, kind of also gives you an insight into the type of community that's here is that people here are, are you know, it's almost like these people, you could find them living on, like, a Moshav, like Bay Meir, or, you know, a little bit more earthy type people. Um, but yet they're completely cosmopolitan at the same time and living in the middle of, you know, a, a city or a town, whatever you want to call it, with access to all the amenities and the healthcare and everything like that, and all professionals and working, you know, a lot of them in Jerusalem, etc. So that is Mivasaret, and it's, uh, we're very happy to welcome people here. We have a lot of shuls. We have shuls that have English speakers in it or are run by English speakers. Uh, even though we're a small community, we're very forceful, I guess, so we make our, we make our impact. So uh, besides the yeshiva that's completely English speaking and American and everybody who goes there only speaks English, um, but there is actually another school here, another school here, sorry, that English speakers. And, uh, and then you have like, you know, everything else. You have uh, your Swati shuls, you have your Ashkenaz shuls. Uh, there's a whole array of, sh of shuls over here. And um, I guess if anybody has any questions. Thank you so much, Ziva. And I just wanna, I know we're running a little bit late, but I just want to say that Ziva does amazing, amazing work, and we're going to be working together on some very cool stuff in the future. So I just want to, can you give a quick overview of what you do? Because you really do amazing work. I, um, I was a, a director of a master plan for the Jerusalem metropolitan area, and I did that for six years. And I realized, uh, as one of the things I realized, was that there are a lot of international investors that are having a hard time coming and entering into the Israeli system here and building 
really um, you know, significant projects that they, they want to invest in Israel, but the bureaucracy here is such that if you don't have somebody kind of hand holding you through the bureaucratic process, uh, you're going to be in trouble and you're going to get stuck in, in probably 12 years of red tape and that's obviously not good for an investor's bottom line. So I help investors bring significant projects here to Israel. Um, I love you, Lori, too. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, and what I'm, one of the projects that I'm doing, uh, along with different infrastructure projects, is that we are actually working to move groups of people who are coming from Anglo countries who want to move to Israel. And this started out actually because I was looking for a specific community for a lot of people that I felt that were not staying in Israel, were leaving Israel, because hashkafically they kind of fell in between, let's say, a classic Dati Lumi place like Efrat to um, a more Israeli Haredi run type of city like Ramat Beit Shemesh. And they were looking, they're coming from places like Passaic and Baltimore and Chicago and Boca and all these places. And, and they would come here, Woodmere, a lot of Ramosha Weinberger people, and they would come here and they would say, um, you know, I would love to move to Israel, but where do I move to? And this was before Kim was doing all these videos, so people didn't know as much. And, um, and so it was a big issue. And so we started actually working with the different, because I had these different government connections, we started working with the authorities to try to create a community for these people, which thank God, Bezrat Hashem, we are succeeding in, succeeding in, Bezrat Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, because nothing's ever done here until it's done. But as a result of that, all of a sudden, all these groups that wanted to come in to make Aliyah from Israel, which now, thank God, as Kim knows with these Zoom videos, it is absolutely just an explosion of people that are looking to move here to Israel. Um, we're now basically become the address both from the government side and from the group side to allow them to find their appropriate communities, which is why we need Kim. And um, we're essentially just working at Shad Khanim to try to help people match to the best communities. And uh, we've become, again, like the address for the government, who now is very on board and realizes, after we tried to explain to them for so long, that these people are coming and we better make sure that it's successful. So now they're coming to us panicked, (laughs) after we came to them panicked for so long, they're coming to us panicked saying, wait, you think you need one community? We need five. And we need, you know, all these people placed. So now there's a huge movement within the Knesset, thank God, to support everybody, support everybody here who wants to come. That's a huge uh, win for everybody who wants to come here potentially. And, um, and that's what we're doing. We're a group of volunteers who is working. We have a long list. We've spoken to every developer and every government agency, and we know every property and development that's available for any group uh, within the center of the country and not even the center of the country at this point. And on the other hand, we have the groups, and they run total spectrum from completely not religious, traditional, to um, we have uh, Hasidim that are Satmar Tzionim, which is supposed to be an oxymoron. But um, yeah, so that's what we're doing. And uh, we need everybody on board. Uh, It's a grassroots movement that's really sort of really crossed its tipping point, uh, thanks to all of you. And it's an amazing merit and schut to just be able to witness that and be at the epicenter of it. It's, It's overwhelming in all the best of ways. Amazing, Stephen. I can't wait. I really can't wait to work together. So yeah. I'm very, very excited about everything. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. No and problem. I just want to ask, is, is Alison on the call? I think she could have had to go. Is she here? I don't know. Alison was going to represent French Hill, but I'll just talk very briefly. French Hill is next to Ramada School across the way, and it's where Hebrew University is. A lot of students are living there. Um, And it's become a very also, I think, one of the best places to invest in. And I'm going to talk about that. If anybody wants, they can send me a personal message and I will give you more information about that location. There's um, also a very big melting pot of different types of people in French Hill. And our last speaker tonight is Mushki, who's been so patient. Where's Mushki? Oh, there you are. Hi. I'm so sorry. Thank you so much for being so patient. Totally fine. Baruch Hashem, it worked out. Um, Okay, I'm going to talk about Abu Tur, which is where I live. I've lived here for the past um, almost 10 years. Um, Me and my husband, we run Chabad of Abu Tur, which um, we, you know, your regular Chabad uh, needs. But we also, when we moved here, um, we were told, like, that by the other religious people that lived in the neighborhood, that, like, they couldn't even get a minion in their Sephardi shul, in the Ashkenazi shul. And somehow when we came, like the minyan started like happening again everywhere, which was, you know, it's kind of beautiful to be able to contribute to that. Um, 
In terms of location, we are on the hill next to the old city. So half of the houses um, in Abu Tor overlook the old city, Artsion, um, and the other half look towards the Dead Sea, the Has Promenade. We have our own little promenade that's kind of like Jerusalem's hidden secret where if you walk, you have the most beautiful view of Harabais. Um, we have buses to city center. Um, you know, we're right off of Dera Hebron. We're 10 minutes to the German colony, to Baca, to Talpio. I think it's like maybe a half an hour to the Shuk. Um, we walk to the Kotel all the time. Um, I mean, I feel like there are so many different kinds of people living here that, um, you know, they always talk about how Yerushalayim is, there's so many different kinds of people living in Yerushalayim. So like Abu Tur is like a little Petri dish of all the different kinds of people that live in Yerushalayim, they, they live in Abu Tur. So when you go to the park, there's like about four or five different languages being spoken. Um, and in terms of community, so I think most of the community is older people. Um, there are many older couples, people who have already raised their families. There are some young couples, you know, if their parents um, live here, they, they, they've moved in as well, which is really nice. I've noticed that in the past few years. Um, and in terms of school, so uh, in term, if you're Haredi, I would say this is probably not the neighborhood for you. Um, but, you know, if you're from religious, there are schools in Baca, or, you know, I know people who travel for high school and things like that. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure what else to say. <laughs> it's one of my favorite I'm neighborhoods. Open to many questions. It's amazing. Yeah. I love Abattoir. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Yeah. Very green, yeah. hidden gem. And uh, yeah. And, and again, uh, Jerusalem is, a, there's so many different uh, aspects of the neighborhood, different types of people and very centrally located. So um, yes. do, you, do you, are you on the Chabad on Nomi Street? Is that where you are? Yeah. Oh, okay. So I mean, uh, we, our Urshel is on Der Chabad. Yeah. So I was actually yeah, showing like some houses there. there, which is a very beautiful neighborhood there. So, yeah. um, and your, is, your children go to Chabad schools? Yeah, so we, we drive them to Betar. That's where we decided to send them. Um, but there are also other Chabad schools that are, are closer. Amazing. Thank you so, so much. And I'm sorry for those people who've been on for a long time that had to wait. I want to introduce very quickly a very dear friend of mine and somebody that I'm privileged to be working with on a daily basis, um, Rafi Shulman from Olim Advisors. Now, I always ask Rafi to come on because there's always new people <laughs> on the call. So Rafi is the, like the moderator. Kim, you need to move on. You need to get going. Okay, so Rafi's, Rafi's telling me you got to get going. Okay, so, I, but I don't want to miss a chance to, for people to know Olim Advisors, Rafi. So uh, introduce Thanks so us. much. Sure. Hi, everyone. Shavuot Tov. Um, so I, uh, I actually made Aliyah twice. I made Aliyah the first time when I was a kid coming from South Africa. Um, and then we made Aliyah the second time from America about five years ago uh, with my wife and our kids. And when we made Aliyah the second time... There, there's some background noise that's very disturbing. I just unmuted so I could say that. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry. Let me see who's not muted. There you go. Thank you. So uh, when we made Aliyah the second time, we realized that it was very challenging. And I grew up in Israel, I speak Hebrew fluently, and yet it, it was a struggle. And so I got together with my sister, who also lives here in Israel. We both live in Hashmonaim. And we said, if, if, we're str if we struggle, then surely a lot of other people are going through the same experiences. And we, in essence, set out to help people. Uh, we met with Nefesh Benefesh and, and really got their advice. And what we did uh, four years ago, we started an organization called Olim Advisors with two goals in mind. The first one is to encourage as many people as possible to make Aliyah. I think it's a, a dream of many people, um, but the challenge is they don't know how to take those first steps and they don't know how to put together a plan. So we work with them uh, really from the early stages, typically six months to a year be before they make Aliyah, 
And we help them with, with many of the decisions from finding a community to finding schools, to finding homes. Um, as you all know, it's, it's not an easy process, especially when you're doing it from, a, from abroad and from a distance. And so we're here in Israel, we're on the ground, so to speak, and really spend hours and hours helping them make those big decisions. Um, and then the second part of our service uh, starts when they get here. And uh, there are a few things that they have to do right off the bat. They have to go to the bank. They have to go to Misada Klita, Misada Pneim. And there's just one thing after another that can be very daunting for people, especially if they don't speak Hebrew, if they don't know the, the culture. And so we actually go with them to uh, these meetings and we make sure that they get all of the benefits that they're supposed to get, that we make sure that everything runs very smoothly. And then we're just their go-to people with just ongoing support. So anything that comes up from, uh, you know, how to choose a doctor to how do I make sure my kids get the proper support they need in school to how do I go into the supermarket and ask somebody for, you know, uh, the, the, the cheese that I want and so on and so on. There's just so many things that we all take for granted and they're so easy when we're living in the States or South Africa or Australia. And really when, when people get here, it's much more challenging. And so we started this organization to just transform that experience from a very overwhelming, a very stressful process to a process that is just much smoother, much easier. And Baruch Hashem, we see just a, an amazing difference, um, you know, when, when people uh, help, work with us and when we help them. And so I just wanted to introduce myself and just really uh, invite you to reach out to me. If you have been thinking about making Aliyah, whether it's the near future or down the road, um, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to talk to you, give you some advice, maybe give you a little bit of direction. And then, of course, once you're ready, then we can talk about putting together a, a game plan, figuring out what the steps are, you know, with the ultimate goal of not just getting people here, but really trying to help them uh, adjust as quickly and as happily as possible. So, you know, it's, it's really uh, you know, amazing to all of you, Kolakovo to all of you that have this dream that you're, you know, following through your dream. And we just want to help in any way that we can. So thanks, Kim. It's, it's always been a pleasure uh, being on this call. And I'll, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Also, um, we started a, a Facebook group recently with Kim and Vora, who's on the call as well. Um, just a support uh, group for both Anglos who are living here as well as for Lim who want to make Aliyah. And so, you know, I just, uh, I'll put the link to the group and you can join. And there's just a, an amazing group of people that are looking to help each other. And so anything that we can do, anything and everything, uh, just feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to help. Thank you so much, Rafi. And uh, Rafi and Laura become very good friends as well. Just amazing, unbelievable people and really have the same desire as I do just to bring as many uh, Jews back to Eretz Israel and give people the opportunity and know that there's a support system for everybody here. So um, thank you so much to everybody for coming on. I want to mention on the call, we have um, two uh, other people that I've connected with and also helping inspire people to make Aliyah. That's um, Ariel and uh, Melissa, who are brokers actually in Manhattan, well, not in Manhattan, sorry, in America, who help people with making Aliyah, but they sell their homes for them. So if anybody's looking to uh, make Aliyah and needs a really good broker, Ariel, do you want to quickly say hello? Hi, how are you? Good. How's everyone? Good. And uh, Ariel is helping people who are looking to make Aliyah, um, help them with his services of being a broker, and uh, he's amazing. And uh, just to say hello. <laughs> Should I introduce this a little you. bit or you got me covered? <laughs> you, you, can, you can give a 30 second hello and, and tell everybody what you're doing and how we work together. Okay, just super quickly. I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time here. Um, so I, I, I've been uh, partnering up with, with Kim uh, uh, lately. And essentially, I you know believe everyone should have the right uh, to go to move to Israel as smoothly as possible. Uh, because I have offices... Uh, in all 50 states, um, and and I'm partnering up with uh, with great agents such as Kim Bosch. Um, my whole mission is to create a very smooth landing, uh, so we can monitor the entire transaction from the selling to the purchasing, so everyone knows what's going on. So there's no uh, oh, uh, so there so there's no misstep. Um, essentially, just to make it smooth, uh, and that's basically it. Um, I don't want to take up too much of our time. 
<laughs> okay, no okay. problem. Thank you, Thank you for contacting us. And I know Melissa's on the call as well, and we can send you their details if anybody is looking to make Aliyah and would like a good um, a broker in America. So thank you so much. And um, what I want to do is open up for questions because it's getting late. And anybody wants to stay on afterwards, I have real estate opportunities in all these different areas in Jerusalem. So um, the Kim Bash real estate team, I have Devorah Benarash who works with me. And we also have a number of other agents that we partner with. So if you're looking to move to Yerushalayim, we've got you covered. Okay, so we have projects, new developments, um, apartments, cottages, you name it. Um, it is an expensive city, so that is something to bear in mind. And I'm very happy to sit with everybody one-on-one -on -one or talk to you on the phone one-on-one -on -one and go through what is available in each of these areas. So um, I'm going to open up the floor for questions. And anybody has to go, thank you so much. And watch our Facebook and social media for the next event that we're going to put on. Um, probably about new developments. I think that's what we're going to be doing. So watch the space. And I'm going to uh, open up to the floor. Please unmute yourself and ask a question if you'd like. Anybody? I think everybody's tired. I have a question about a neighborhood called Katamonim. Not Katamon, but Katamonim. Uh, do you know anything about it? I heard it's undergoing gentrification. So I was wondering what rents were like there, what the neighborhood's like. So it's an extension of Old Katamon. Ah. And it's a much more, it, it was in the past a more Israeli neighborhood. Um, and it is a little bit more less expensive. It's still expensive, but rentals there will start at about 5,000 shekels to 7,000 shekels, depending on the condition of the apartment. Buying there, you can probably get something, I would say, I'm talking about something that's not renovated. Okay, about 2.3, 2.4 million shekels. So about 600,000 to $700,000. Okay, thank you. And it's a very nice neighborhood. It's, it's walking distance as well to Katamon. It's, it's become, you know, very up and coming as well. Lots of new projects. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Kim, I just want to clarify because I saw yes. people on the chat that Mivaseret is Mivaseret Sion and you can find it on the map like I said right across from Hanof right behind Ramot um, right outside the main borders of the city itself of Jerusalem. Great and it's beautiful the homes there are just absolutely gorgeous I was looking and people asked me about the neighborhood I was like gorgeous gorgeous homes. Yeah it's, it's very that. suburban it's very it's much more pastoral green you know okay. Very green. Forested yeah. areas here. I would say if people want more housing, then that's an area definitely to look into. The Mopet and the Viserit, where you can get definitely bigger properties. Besides, if you don't want to go into a frat or the gush, I would say. Right. So for, just, sure. uh, for people coming on the first time, we have a YouTube uh, channel, Kimbash Real Estate. So please uh, look up and see all the other neighborhoods we have covered as well. And please um, send me a direct message if there's a particular area that you want us to cover. Okay. We're going to be doing Ashkelon and Kasaria and Zikran Yaakov and a whole lot of other things are coming up. So um, we can get we're trying to get all. Yes, who's that? Shifra. Yeah. Hi, Shifra. Hi. Yeah, you and I spoke the other day, and I want to just throw this out to the group. Um, it, financially speaking, are there any organizations, any infrastructure that anybody knows about that could help finance, other than the bank where you get the mortgage from? Are there any organizations that would extend loans um, towards towards financing the move and per, specifically the purchase of a property in Eretz Yisrael? So any maybe, maybe Lita has some some comments on that, but I know we Shifra we spoke about that in great detail, and that's something that I'm hoping to to work on as as a project, affordable housing for people who are going right. to be moving to Israel. So. Um, Making some type of some type of fund philanthropic yeah. fund that would um, assist people with financing because, like we said the other day, their hearts are there already. Oh. Their their suitcases are packed, but they're they're shut out of the market, and that's not forgivable. That our people are closed down from coming because of finances. So yeah, you and I will pick up more. I left you with an action item that I've been trying to um, execute. Just. I'm waiting for that one person to contact me. 
Great. We're with Sorry, the- I just wanted to mention to you that just to, people should be aware, I'm sure Kim, you mentioned this to people, but if it's your first, but you know, for, before we're talking about, let's say, nonprofit assistance, and of course there are, you know, free loan societies that you can access in different neighborhoods, but um, the government itself, if this is somebody's first home that they're purchasing here in Israel, there are financial incentives that are given, especially if you are a new immigrant, and Kim, if I'm repeating something you mentioned, let me know, but there are a lot of incentive programs that are available from the you know government side of things. So for instance, you're going to be getting, um, especially if you're a new Ole, you're going to be paying very little taxes on the property, which in Israel is a massive chunk of people's expenses. Um, you know, you're going to be, again, maybe Rafi can even explain this better, but there are, uh, you know, tax and price benefits that happen. You don't have to pay, um, you know, your purchase tax is different, things like that, that take off a large chunk because a lot of what makes it so expensive is actually really the taxes. So if you are being given off on those taxes, that adds up to a lot of money. And I just can I also, a, I want to, can, also, I'm sorry, I just want to add also a, just a creative idea that I've shared with some people is that, um, you know, buying a home in Israel is, is a lot of people's dreams. And in some cases, if you want to live in Yerushalayim, it might be too expensive for you to buy in Yerushalayim. So what some people might do is they might buy a property in the periphery. It could be up north or down south, more as an investment, and then rent in Yerushalayim. You know, the difference between Israel, for example, and the U.S. is that rentals very often are a lot lower than morga- than your monthly mortgage uh, payment. And so you might be able to, in essence, have your cake and eat it too by renting in Yerushalayim and living in it if that's where you want to live and still owning some property in a different part of Israel. So just uh, you know, a slightly different take on things, but it might be something that uh, is of, an, of interest to some of you. I think can I, can I also... Actually, uh, just, just One thing about what Rafi said is that I, the thing I tell people all the time <laughs> making Aliyah is that um, you know, coming from a lot of the countries that we come from, so we want to decide where we're going to live for the next 30 years. It's a very emotional investment when we buy a property. Whereas Israelis are completely the opposite. And the way to really survive is what Rafi's saying is that a lot of people will buy an apartment wherever they can buy an apartment and they might not even live in it at any point. They buy what they can afford and they rent it out like Rafi's saying. So, you know, here people are much less emotional about their purchases. Not to, that you shouldn't be emotional. You can buy your dream home and it can be wonderful and amazing. But if you can't, and that's an option for you, um, being Israeli here goes a long way and buy where you can buy. And if you don't live in it, you might never live in it, but you then eventually sell it and upgrade and you keep on buying. And that's how you play the Israeli real estate game. And I also say that for the last like 25 or 30 years, I've thought that moving to Israel was out of reach because I could never have the funds to buy an apartment. It's only in the last two or three years that I've realized that rentals are an option and I will never be able to afford to buy an apartment or a home in Israel. I may not be able to afford to rent an apartment in Yerushalayim, but I can certainly afford to rent an apartment by Aretz without, you know, asking for um, loans from a free loan society. So it's with that awareness that I'm, I'm moving forward. Absolutely, Jane, I agree with you. And I think that that's a, it's definitely a, a reframe of looking at it. And there's some and, wonderful, wonderful communities that, uh, you know, besides you should plan, that you could move to. And, and I'm, it's, it's, it's not that I'm observant, but it pulls me in, in Yiddish, sitzitma. you know, it, 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 it pulls me my entire life. Um, so thank you very much, Kim. It's a pleasure. And be in touch. We'll talk more about where, sh- where you should go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay, so um, okay, so let me just show you. I'm just going to quickly go into some of the properties, and I just want to stress to you: this is just to give you an idea. You don't have to stay on the call now. I wish you all a good night, or wherever you may be. I'm going to be sharing some opportunities, real estate opportunities, and again, I have properties all over Jerusalem, and we can help you. And we can, you can be in touch with myself or Devora or Karen, who I didn't introduce on the call this time, who are our, who's part of my team. And we will have um, basically a call with you and we can talk about different communities, your budget and your family's criteria, 
whatever it may be, to try and find the perfect place for you to come. So for those of you who stay on, thank you. Thank you for staying on. For those of you who need to go, thank you so much. And thank you to everybody, Lori, to everybody who's gone, Ziva, Rafi, who's ever been on the call tonight. I, I really, really appreciate everybody's time. Thank you so, so much. Okay, I'm going to show you. Um, okay. Okay, let's see over here. So this was last week. Some of our slide presentation didn't, didn't come about. It, it wasn't working. So this is a place in Harhoma, which we spoke about. Um, it's also more of an Israeli neighborhood, which is much more affordable. And um, hold on one second. We got a coffee, but I want to watch this. Okay, hold on one second. Ramada School. Oh, it's going too fast now. Hold on. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's just go back. Ramada School. There's another neighborhood. That? Lots of different building and developments there. You can get an apartment there starting from about six, seven hundred thousand dollars. Ramada School. Listen to our first Zoom on Jerusalem. Lots of different building going on in Ramada School. Old Katamon. I have a new project there. Um, also a great neighborhood. I have 13 apartments and one building to sell. Lady, I spoke with Kim Bash. She has, she's the one who I wanted okay. to. Just a reminder to mute yourselves. I have a luxury development in a German colony, which is going to be built in um, two years. This is on the Hamsila, which we spoke about. It's going to have a doorman and a swimming pool and a gym. And this is looking at moving date 2023. Okay. And the price range for that? That one we're starting at about, I would say, for a two-bedroom over a million dollars for that. It's expensive. Then I have in the city center as well. The, uh, the city center has become very, very popular. I'd say it's like living in Manhattan. I have a lot of people from New York who are moving to the city center. A lot of people from the main cities like Paris and Milan, people who are used to living in the city who like living in downtown Jerusalem. So I have a lot of these new buildings where it also has the same, it has a doorman, it has a pool, um, a gym, and also on the light rail, beautiful new buildings all coming up in. Uh, the other day I was, I was selling, I'm selling an apartment in Rehavi and I was looking out on, from the balcony and just into, into the, I saw 17 cranes. It's crazy what's going on. So much development is going on right now in downtown Jerusalem. Rehavia, which is one of the most expensive neighborhoods. Um, this is just to give you an idea of an apartment. This is uh, over 125 square meters, three bedrooms, three bathrooms. Uh, this is about $1.3 million. Abattoir, which we spoke about. Um, this is actually a, a less expensive neighborhood. This It's because I would say that people don't know a lot about Abattoir. It's also a mixed neighborhood. And there's a beautiful renovated apartment here that you can get for 2.9 million shekels, about 600,000, 650, sorry. What's the dollar today? I don't even know. Um, but this is more affordable. Baka, more expensive, very Anglo neighborhood. Uh, it's a lot of Americans, Canadians living in Baka. Um, this is a beautiful house. And this is closer onto the like $1.82 million mark. And again, that was just to give you um, an idea. But again, I have lots of different opportunities. Don't be scared off because I can show you properties much. I was showing properties today to a couple who are empty nesters and they have a budget of 2 million shekels. And so we, we, met, we found some beautiful places um, and we're very creative. They only need a two bedroom. So again, it's a reframe depending on what space that you need. But um, there's a place for everybody in Israel. There's a place for everybody in Jerusalem. And we're here to help you. So please reach out to us um, and be in contact with me directly. Does anybody have any questions? No? Deb? Thank you. Thank you so much. I just want Deborah to come on and say hello quickly. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see everyone. And um, yes, it's, Jerusalem is an incredible place to live. And um, it's very exciting, but not everybody 
uh, is ready to land there. I actually live in Ramat Beit Shemesh Aleph and uh, the Ramat Beit Shemesh and Beit Shemesh area. Uh, myself and Carrie Miller are covering. So if anybody's interested in that, feel free to reach out to me. I'll put my information there and we have a WhatsApp um, group. We have a Facebook group and we're sharing new information all the time about new properties, existing properties, all the different areas. So Hatzlacha with everyone, and we're here to help you all step of the way. Any, wherever you're holding, whatever questions you have, don't be afraid to reach out and ask us. Hi, Karen. Unmute yourself, okay. Karen also Hi. just made Aliyah and has joined my team to help uh, people and, and uh, help with the development process of what we're looking to bring people into different neighborhoods. So Karen's helping with Ramat Beit Shemesh and the whole new developments in Ramat Beit Shemesh. So Karen, introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. And I uh, welcome all of you, whether it's to Yerushalayim or any part of Israel. I'm here for a couple of months now. And I'm really excited about being here. We're looking forward to bringing many more people here. And uh, like Deborah said, we are um, working at Ramat Bechemesh, mainly right now focusing on, you know, trying to build it up and bringing people here, finding a really a community. It's not just about finding the right home. It's about finding community, finding the right environment, the right place for the kids and networking to whatever it is that you need to, you know, to do. And that's what we're here to do. And we're here to help you to do that. And we're really, really excited about it. So feel free to reach out to us anytime. If, if you have friends that are looking, maybe they're not looking in Yerushalayim and they would like to come to Ramat Shemesh, please forward them our number and our contact and we're glad to help them. Welcome. Thank you so much. So be in touch, everybody. And uh, next week, we'll probably be covering, as I mentioned before, new developments in Israel, different projects for people who are not uh, ready to make Aliyah just yet, but would like to secure a property in Israel. Sometimes buying on paper, off plan, is uh, a little bit more affordable because of the payment schedule. So I'm not sure, I have not confirmed that yet, but that's may maybe what we'll be doing next week. Um, otherwise, we'll be covering another great city in Israel. So I wish everybody a good night again, and everybody should be safe, and uh, hoping for uh, good, res good results <laughs> for the upcoming Are there any election. tax benefits? Are there any tax, tax benefits. benefits for that? What you just said, like buying on paper and uh, before you actually are ready to make Aliyah? No, um, if you do not make Aliyah straight away, you have like an 18 month period to pay the acquisition tax. But it's basically just helps you when you're buying on, um, on paper, you only have to put down a certain amount, a percentage down of um, the, the purchase price. So for example, on a project that let's just say is three years away, the developer will only require between 15 and 20% down payment. And then as construction goes along, you require to pay a certain amount. So there's not really much tax benefit. It just helps you with your payment schedule. If people don't have a huge down, can't afford to put down all the money up front. And how do you be on top of the construction and like your requirements uh, when you're overseas or whatnot? How so many, your your as uh, there's on our YouTube um, page, you'll find how to buy a home in Israel. Please go and check that out. But but in general, you have a team of people that work with you. You have a great lawyer and people who will work with you to make sure that everything is is happening according to what's called a technical spec, which gets given to you when you buy on paper. And usually you'll have to come some stage during, some people don't come. I mean, just to give you, I'm selling properties to people now who have not been to see the properties. These are already secondhand homes um, because they want to, they don't want to uh, wait. They are a little bit anxious. They want to get their money out of America. So um, I sold a home in Baca last week. I sold a home in the city center and I'm selling another home this week in Remote Bet. So you just have to have a good team working with you. that answers your question i don't know who answered okay yes. so okay so let's hope we have a good week this week i'm hoping we have a good election results and whatever it may be will be and uh, we should have uh, many more people make aliyah and come and live in the holy land any other questions before we sign off amen and thank you
Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Take care. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. Thank you.